Coming up on the Mobile Content Creators Show. I said, let's take a look at it. And he looked at it. And first first thing he said was, wow, great story. And then I said, I shot it on my iPhone. And I don't think I'm allowed to say the words on Skype uh, that he said after that. <laughs> he couldn't believe it. So today's topic, how do you go about winning an Emmy just using your iPhone? And how do you teach the next generation to do the same thing? Welcome to the Mobile Content Creators Show. If you're a mobile journalist, marketer, or creative who makes content on a mobile device or for mobile audiences, you're in the right place. Keeping you up to date with the fast-moving world of mobile, here's your host and mobile video specialist, Mark Egan. Hello again, and I know it's been a while, and I apologize for that. It's not through uh, want of trying. i uh, been fairly busy, and also some of the people I've wanted to speak to have just been in the wrong time zones to make it happen easily uh, but I'm back on the wagon now got a great um, episode for you today and uh, got a few really really good uh, interviews lined up in the future as well so without any further delay let's jump into today's interview today I'm joined by Mike Castellucci who's an Emmy award-winning um, journalist from the United States um, he previously worked at WFAA in uh, Texas and won Emmys for work he did uh, using the iPhone on programs, which we'll come to. Um, and now he's a professor of journalism at Michigan State University. So Mike, um, busy guy, thank you for taking the time to join me. Whereabouts are you right now? Where am I speaking to you from? Um, actually in the brand new newsroom uh, in the uh, uh, Communication Arts and Sciences College at Michigan State. And uh, it's in the process of being uh, finished. They hope to have it done by election day. In fact, and it's uh, it's just a huge it's basically a, a newsroom and a huge lab for all of the students. All right. OK, well, we'll come to that in a, a bit later on, because I'm intrigued to know what your approach is going to be teaching the students of tomorrow um, or students of today for the uh, the industry of tomorrow. But um, going back to um, your background. So uh, what was your, you know, the 30 second abridged life history of uh, Mike Castellucci then? <laughs> well, I've uh, been in the business for uh, 29 years, always a reporter, never a photographer, until about six years ago where I, I felt a creative need at the market that I was in in San Diego that, uh, and, and to do something on my own. And I picked up a flip camera. Does everybody remember what a flip camera is? Yeah, uh, had, had, had no microphone input. I remember that. Yeah. That's, that's exactly right. And it was a, about 120 bucks. And, and uh, so I took it upon myself to to do not just a story with it, but a whole half hour show and all of the ramifications and and uh, so forth with that. So that led me into doing complete stories just with my iPhone. Wow. Oh, I didn't realize you did a whole program with a flip camera. You're insane. You're completely nuts. Uh, How did that go? I, yeah. Well, uh, it, it was a great uh, uh, study in uh, any audio that I got and made sure that it was in a quiet place, uh, that there was a lot of background sound uh, as far as interviews and so forth goes. I just, of, of course, there were so many limitations with that camera, but uh, you know, I th I'm pretty proud of it. I think I made it work. <laughs> is there anywhere, is that up online anywhere? Can that be yes. seen? Yeah. Yes, yes. It's uh, on my website. It's MikeCastellucci.com. All right. Well, hey, look, we're like two minutes in and you're getting the plugs in already. I'm dealing with a professional here. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so you were working uh, WFAA um, and, you know, presumably you're usually working with camera crews or photographers, as you uh, call them over there. Um, where did the idea first come up to think, you know, let's make a program completely with a phone. And this is what probably iPhone 5S kind of era, was it? Yeah, it was the iPhone 5. Uh, I think my boss, when I went to WFA, knew that I did this program uh, by myself, the the one with the, with the uh, flip camera. And she just said, do you think you could do an entire story package, two minutes with just your iPhone? And I said, let me give it a shot. And I did. And... Uh, it, ju it just progressed from there. I started doing doing uh, packages with the iPhone and adding uh, microphones and audio and so forth and and uh, and editing them on my laptop. And it just progressed into the two half hour shows that I've done on it now. And um, 
were the people whose job it is photographers to go out and shoot things normally um did they still did they still speak to you in the canteen were you like not invited to the christmas party how did they respond yeah that's right i think to my face they're being kind but i think they're talking about me uh, in the hallways uh you know i i got an incredible amount of uh different opinions from photographers i, I mean I, I from around the country i mean i saw some comments come in that said, well, I may as well go back to being a bartender. Uh, that's the beginning of the end. Thanks, Mike. You know, all of this stuff. And um, it just, it was really interesting. And I think without going into it in, in detail and the philosophy and so forth, it isn't the end of it. I mean, you, you have to know, uh, I was the only one to do it at WFAA. And it's been going on now for, what, two and a half years. And I think I'm still the only one. I was really interested when I went over to your place uh, for MojoCon in Ireland and met all you fine folks. By the way, I want to do that again. I will. Uh, and uh, and I, I think that you all over there in, in Europe are a little uh, uh, more progressive than we are even here yet and in that because regard. The, the reason I ask is that uh, my impression was is that um, – you know, even with the kind of basic video journalism thing, multi-scaling journalists shooting on even DSLRs or bigger cameras, um, there's lots of resistance in the United States and obviously the unions are much stronger and yeah. whatever the rights and wrongs of it all are, um, that's why um, in other parts of the world perhaps it's taken on more. So I was quite surprised when you sort of um, said, oh, you know, I was just asked to do a package here and there. I would have thought that would create a big issue um, that somebody was shooting not on a big camera and... They weren't the uh, the photographer. Yeah, I, I think it is. I, I just, uh, there's so many schools of thought. I do know that the Tegna, the company that I work for, WFA, they own 46 TV stations across the country. Uh, you know, they, they looked at it as, uh, in fact, they gave me the Innovator of the Year Award, which I'm still the reigning person of until March, by the way. March, so. <laughs> right. <yeah. laughs> uh, and is there a big so, handover after that? Is there? Right, that's right. <laughs> So I think it's, I mean, it's obviously, which way is it going? Uh, I think we're all going to have to uh, uh, embrace it at some point. Oh, definitely. I mean, that's why you talk about the person talking about being a bartender. You know, uh, you you and I are probably the same mindset where we, we would think, ooh, that looked quite good. Maybe I should uh, learn those skills or make myself yeah. future-proof. I, I never quite understand the mentality of, oh, I uh, better just stop. Um, but so you got to the point where you're right, you're going to make this half hour program using an iPhone. Um, wh how did you approach it? You know, what accessories and kit did you, you use? And did you plan it differently from if you were planning a normal piece with a bigger camera? Uh, I didn't. I, I already had some of the content with the, with the packages and I was going to use them and integrate them into the half hour show with a theme. Um, and uh, the theme actually was sort of making fun of of the photographers that thought I was running their careers. Um, and I used that if you if you look at the first half hour show, I used that as a theme throughout. So I was kind of making fun of uh, of that. But um, I didn't go about it any differently uh, than I usually did my daily work and. It was a big project, and the second one was a big project, and I'm in the middle of a third one. So, right, okay. Well, I mean, yeah. I, I mean, anybody who's not seen it, go to. It's on your website, isn't it? Um, yes. And uh, phoning it in, and I love the setup at the beginning because obviously you set up what you're doing and why you're doing it. And uh, the scene I do love is when you ring the photographer, the camera crew, to tell him he's not going to be needed. And obviously he can't uh, believe it. Um, uh, I do love the fact, though, that that uh, cameraman is standing in the corridor with his camera on his shoulder, ready to go. Now, I've worked with various crews, some very uh, keen, some not so keen, but never have I met one who's just standing, you know, like a SWAT team, ready to go with the camera on their shoulders. <laughs> so I love that. Um, but, uh, you know, so, I mean, what did you do about things like sound? Uh, I and, and that's the... the that if I get a question, that would be the first question that everybody asks, from professionals to my colleagues to professors around the, the world, how do I get the sound? And uh, it, it's a basic setup. I almost don't want to want to tell anybody anymore. It seems like I've got the corner on it, but I, I don't think so. I've seen our friend uh, Wets there. He's, he does it. I know you do it. 
um, it's it's simple. I just took a I just take a uh, um, a wireless microphone uh, that you use in any of the larger cameras and and uh, use a an adapter to plug it into the headphone jack. So I have a wireless uh, receiver on that, and then I, I, I'll just put the uh, the transmitter on a subject and. And I, 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 what people don't get is that if I need NAT sound um, and I'm away from the subject, I'll just unplug it. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's just as simple as that, plugging and unplugging. Um, and that's how I do it anyway. Uh, did you find anything different in your travels? Oh, well, I, I mean, I think uh, if you've got the wireless microphones, uh, that's uh, definitely the way to go. I mean, there's obviously some people record the audio separately and sync it up. And then there are microphones if you're going to be physically close, you can use. But um, I mean, I love shooting wirelessly as well. It just gives you the freedom. And also, if you're trying to get natural reactions from people, I find that um, if you're not connected to them directly, they start to kind of forget that you're filming or just relax and do their thing. So, right. um, uh, so yeah, I think this sounds like a brilliant setup. And as far as, I mean, did you have any particular mounts, you know, like the padcaster or iographer or those kind of things? Uh, yeah, I use, um, in fact, and uh, I've changed with each show. Uh, I used a um, Izzy Gadgets on the second show. Uh, have you heard of that one? That's a I-Z-Z-I -Z Gadgets, Izzy Gadgets. And it, uh, it basically looks like an old... Uh, it's a, a case that fits on the back of the iPhone, and it has a wheel with three different lenses on it. Oh, uh, yes, I'm, I remember that. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and then now I'm using a, a something called a Beast Grip. Yep. And um, and that and simply because the Beast Grip has not only a nice wide angle lens, which I use 99% of the time on all of the shots, um, because it gives it a nice wider angle, but uh, it also has uh, an opportunity to um, connect uh, a microphone and maybe a, a shotgun microphone and a light if you want it. And it's just a handy little uh, holder for everything. And so let me put the question to you that um, I get asked. I'm sure you've been asked before. Once you start sticking all this stuff paraphernalia on it and you've got the mic on the top and a light and you've got your wireless pack hanging off the side and, you know, and you've somebody walks past and says oh mobile uh you might as well use a big camera look at the size of that rig you've got now um what do you say to that i say it's still an iphone i mean it's there's just there I, there's a couple of things on it but it's still a little i mean it's still five pounds compared to 30 or or, or whatever it is and it's uh, not intrusive in fact that's been part of the appeal and i think how I've been able to maybe get some of the reactions from people. Uh, I call my stories uh, stories on the human condition, and I just think that it it's so much less obtrusive. And I mean, I set up something, and I'll ask somebody something, and I'm I'm sure what's going through their mind is what could what could he be doing? It's just an iPhone for crying out loud. So uh, what harm could we be doing here? So uh, you know, it's still an iPhone. And do you have, a, I mean, if um, if somebody was about to go and shoot something and um, they'd never shot before on an iPhone, maybe had a little bit of video knowledge and they came to you for a little pep talk and they said, right, I've never shot on an iPhone before. Um, you know, what shooting style would you suggest? What do you use? What's the little pep talk you would give them? Well, and I'm doing it right now to for these students who've uh, here at Michigan State University who've never I mean, the only thing that they've really shot with their iPhone is a Vine or a, you know, a 20 second uh, video at their sorority or something. They've never really taken the time to understand that it, you know, what I call it, Mark, is perception. I mean, you just, if if you're steady with an iPhone and, and know to keep your elbows in and keep it uh, horizontal and and the little things, and, and you tap on the screen to lock the focus and the iris so you don't get a focus shift or an iris shift. I mean, all these little things, you just start layering perception. You put a microphone on it, another layer of, layer of perception. You uh, don't make drastic moves. You put it on a, on a tripod, everything's steady, another layer of perception. All of a sudden, it's professional. Mm. 
I'm glad to see that you're uh, teaching very similar things to me and I'm not talking complete rubbish. Um, but, <laughs> um, and uh, what was the reaction then? So you've, when the first one went out, you know, this program, maybe people had preconceptions about what it might look like. Um, mm -hmm. What was the reaction from people in your organization and also from the audience? Incredible. Uh, when I first uh, gave to our chief editor so he could put it into the system for a broadcast that night, when I first gave him a story that I shot and edited or shot on the iPhone and edited on my laptop and I just gave him a, a flash drive so he could put it in the system, I said, let's take a look at it. And he looked at it and first first thing he said was, well, great story. And then I said, I shot it on my iPhone. And I don't think I'm allowed to say the words on Skype uh, that he said after that. <laughs> he couldn't believe it. And this is a guy who's been in the business for 35 years. He could not tell the difference. Now, a professional photographer can tell the difference. There's a difference. Um, but it's it's not much. Mm. Again, it's, it's perception, right? If it's done well and the story is about a, a human being and, and it's emotional and it's engaging, you're not going to tell. Um, and then you came around to do a second one. Um, did you do anything differently? Did you learn any lessons, any lessons from the first time and think, right, I'm going to do, do it this way this time? Uh, no, you know, in fact, it's, it was almost, I, of course, I, I started getting a little more tricky and, and uh, adding a little, you know, a few more gadgets, which you don't need, by the way. Um, but uh, I've, I've got a couple more gadgets and, and I am working on a on a third iPhone show only because nobody still no one here at least has done it and I and it's still uh, it, to me it's it's something that uh, I I see now I'm hesitating because I know who I'm talking to uh, over here at least uh, nobody has done this and and I think I've got a, a corner on the on the market uh, at least over here. So, um, and then when, kinda... once you've done exhausted that, then you can be the f the first Android shop programs, and then <laughs> could, there'll be something else. Maybe the Windows it. ones, maybe. Um, and uh, I I feel like I need to congratulate you like multiple times over because obviously there's been some Emmy action here. So tell me about that. What what were you nominated for? What have you won? And did you go to any fancy dues? <laughs> I'm not allowed in those fancy things. No. Uh, the first iPhone show, it, it garnered a lot of attention. In fact, I think that's uh, why our friend Glenn uh, and and you, in fact, found me and and were so ni nice enough to ask me over to to speak at MojoCon, and uh, and it just it, it kind of blew up. Uh, I won a I won two Emmys and two Edward R. Murrow awards for that show. Um, and I don't know if Emmys and Edward R. Murrow's are familiar over there. Yeah, well, I think especially Emmys. Emmys are very well known, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so this last Saturday, uh, I just won an, an Emmy for the second iPhone show, phoning it in. And um, uh, and I, I got to say this, uh, a photographer friend, a cameraman a friend commented that uh, not too many, he commented to me, not too many people can say they won an Emmy by using their iPhone. So, you know, I've been entering these contests, not as a video journalist or a mobile journalist or, or anything like that. I've just been entering them in our regular categories. And, and what sort of categories are we talking about? Oh, the, the category that won Saturday night was a uh, specialty assignment program. So I was going up against, I think there was five other nominees and they were all just, uh, you know, regular uh, programs from TV stations across uh, the region. And um, so I don't, I don't even know if I told them, well, they would know if they saw it, uh, that I was using an iPhone because I refer to it. But um, I'm just, you know, that's another thing I wanted to do. I wanted to see if I could compete with, with everybody else. On a, on a level basis and it seems like i am yeah well i mean I, I mean like when i do training i like showing a, a bit of um one of your programs um and the reason firstly it you know the people who come in with the kind of 
you know, I'm from broadcast television. Is this technically any good? You put that on screen and that tends to keep uh, end that conversation. Um, but also <laughs> it's um, I like the, like, I, like the <laughs> I like the style of it. I like the um, it's, um, you know, it's not kind of very um, how can you say, you know, there's lots of great stuff that's done in serious news and stuff like that. Um, whereas, you know, the topics you talk about, you know, they're kind of like slice of life, the human condition, as you say, but it's put together in a really kind of fun, upbeat, creative kind of way. Um, so I think it, the fact that you're not just doing something that's adequate, you're actually making something that's good by any means, whatever camera you're using. So that's why, uh, yeah, I think you deserve Thank to win a few awards. So well done for that. Um, and so you you've did the second you're on to your third but you've moved across now into the world of academia um you're now a professor you obviously walk around with a big gown and stuff presumably all the time um so uh, have, why did I you do that on, i have patches on my uh, jacket <laughs> on my elbows now that's and a pipe that's a no, good I... look that's a good look you can pull it off um so yeah um you know uh why why the move um i don't know i just I, it was a tough decision after 29 years in the business. I, I just felt that it was a, an incredible opportunity to, because I'll tell you why, Mark, uh, because, uh, you know, all of my colleagues and so forth were coming up to me saying, Hey, how do you do that? Hey, what do you do? And I was, I started thinking to myself, you know, I figured it out and I'm just like you, why don't you go ahead and do that? You're a professional and I'll go try to share this knowledge with, with the people that are going to take your jobs in two years. <laughs> <laughs> that, and, and, make yourself and, even more popular. Yeah, that, yeah, that's right. Uh, but really, it, it came down to, it's true. I mean, they're going to be in the workplace, these college kids, in, in a couple of years. And, and what I faced with my colleagues is, you know, them learning something new like that uh, some, some think it's okay. Others don't really care to do it. But these students, uh, whose iPhone is, has been native to them since they were, uh, very little seemed like a, an appropriate thing to do. And I wonder, cause you know, I've done bits and bobs with the uh, universities and, um, it's a difficult one because you know when people say, "Well, how do you get into the BBC?" Which obviously, where, where I used to work, um, and um, you know, they ask for advice on the industry. It's changed so much that actually anything I say about my experience of getting in, I think is like a lot of it is no longer relevant because it's changed so much. Mm. But what um, you know, you, you meet two kind of types of people. Some are it's the end of the world you know, stay away. And others are, hey, there's so much more content being made now. Everybody's got tablets and phones and the demand for yeah. content is really high. What's your approach? What are you teaching them? And what kind of message are you giving them? Yeah, uh, exactly what you just said. I mean, there's so much uh, content to be had and t uh, broadcast, you know, it was even changing, you know, four months ago when I, when I left WFAA. And by the way, I still, uh, you know, maintain a great relationship with, with Tegna, the, the parent company. And I hope to uh, broadcast this third iPhone sh show on various platforms of theirs. But, um, you know, they even, they even, they, they don't even call themselves a, a television station anymore. They, you know, they're almost digital first now. And, um, in fact, one of the digital managers at at WFA told me that, you know, he'll get a stack of 200 resumes. And if, and he said maybe one or two, uh, have the skills to shoot with an iPhone or just a, a you know, a smaller camera, the mobile journalism type, uh, equipment. And he said, you know, if you gave me a couple of, of students, I would hire them today. So that knew what they were doing. And I think that's why uh, I don't know if I'm answering your question, but I, but I think that's, you know, obviously the way it's progressing and, and we need to embrace it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I think one of the things I think with students is um, when I started, there was this whole kind of thing about, um, you know, the problem of getting experience and people wouldn't hire you without experience. 
Whereas now people look at younger people who understand social media naturally and uh, technically, you know, in the digital age. And it's almost an advantage that they're at that age, um, which um, is quite a different thing. And I mean, you know, you said you're in this uh, newsroom studio that you're setting up um, at uh, Michigan State University. Um, will that be all a conventional newsroom? Will there be any kind of iPhone switcher studio type action going on in there? Yeah, I'm, we're actually, we have a curriculum meeting uh, coming up in the next couple of days. We've been talking about it. And the reason I'm here is uh, we're actually probably going to add, um, if not an entire class on, on iPhoneography, phonography, um, it'll be close. And we're going to be one of the first to do it, I think. Uh, that's one of the classes that will be held in here. This is, uh, this big newsroom will be kind of a lab classroom. It'll be, uh, a place, a studio, a studio that, that has robotic cameras and, as I look around, uh, I don't see how it's going to be done by uh, election day, November 8th, but we'll see. Um, and, you know, it, there are other classes that that teach broadcast and uh, they'll be doing their half hour uh, newscast from here. And so it'll be a multiple use. There's even a video capture, a uh, animation room to my left, uh, motion capture room and a studio and of course all kinds of computers to work on it, to do, edit. it does make me laugh sometimes going into universities and people have got a better equipment than actual people <laughs> in like major broadcasters i mean when <laughs> i came to the bbc the stuff i was using at university was much better than the bbc stuff um <laughs> and uh yeah there is you know still some places you go into and they haven't upgraded their cameras for years so yeah so um hopefully they'll be uh learning from the best as well um uh, so a few little questions. MojoCon, uh, you mentioned that you came over. Um, what did you make of it uh, coming from uh, over from the States to see what was happening? Mark, I'm telling you, it was one of the best, one of the best conferences, one of the best experiences I've had. Honest to gosh, uh, it opened my eyes. It, uh, it, uh, I was amazed to be with other professionals that shared kind of a singular vision and and um, and and from there, I, you know, I was asked to speak at uh, a conference in New York City called Promax BDA. It's one of the big industry conferences. Are you familiar with that one? Uh, I've heard the name. I, I don't know too much about the details of it. Yeah, and uh, I was honored to be on a panel of. Um, it was called New Technology and Storytelling. New Technology and Storytelling, and I was. It was me with with my iPhone. It was a filmmaker um, uh, from National Geographic Creative. And then it was a, a gentleman who uses GoPros a lot. He's embedded in in conflicts and battles and wars. And he, he's a documentarian. So it was really, it was fascinating, that one. But the MojoCon was uh, the thing that started it all. And I, it, it was terrific. You know, I loved it. Are you that's going to continue, isn't it? Well, we're waiting for confirmation. Obviously, uh, I, it's, uh, Glenn's the man to uh, uh, do that. But um, obviously, each year it has to um, get approved. But um, we're, we're very hopeful. And um, I'll, I'll definitely be there and obviously hope to see you there if it, if it does go ahead. Um, and um, uh, by the way, when I last spoke to you at um, MojoCon, you were about to stay on in Ireland for a few days afterwards. How did your trip after MojoCon go? Well, first of all, you, you drive on the wrong side of the road, uh, and that, and and on top of that, uh, there are uh, roundabouts. So, I mean, talk about completely. Uh, <laughs> uh, the anxiety was at a highest level, but uh, we were able to get around and without an accident, and. Uh, uh, I don't know if you saw the story. I sure would like you to see it. Um, I went off to Ennis, Ennis, Ireland. Do you know where that is? Yep. Uh, and we visited the Cliffs of Moher and so forth. But we, I went to, to Ennis, Ireland because where I'm from in, in Dallas, where I worked at WFAA, there's a small town about 40 miles away from Dallas called Ennis. It was the same, same spelling and everything. 
And I thought, wow, what a great uh, chance to um, compare it to two small towns. And so uh, we went to Ennis and we stayed at a, a hotel overnight and I found a perfect subject. This, uh, In fact, we still communicate with each other. Uh, it's called Carrie's Cakes. Uh, it, she's a baker that she was born in, in Ennis and she's uh, she calls herself a survivor and she uh, gets up every morning at 4 a.m. and and bakes and it's just a really a great little piece um in fact can i give you this uh youtube yeah i think if you type in youtube ennis and ireland pkg that's for package ennis and ireland pkg you'll see it okay that's not a very imaginative title um for a creative <laughs> guy like you um but yeah i'll definitely look that up now um uh just uh because i'm conscious of time just to sort of wrap it up as far as where you know you say that you're leading the charge and um you are the kind of captain america of mojo kind of thing um where is it do you foresee a day when you know it's just going to become normal everyone's going to be doing this and how far away is that day I don't know. Is there going to be a, another instrument that, that takes its place? Like, uh, gee, I thought uh, six years ago that the flip camera was the new HD way, even though it didn't have any microphone outlets. No, I don't know. Um, I, it seems like the iPhone is here to stay, and uh, I, I wish I had the 7 Plus. The, the, the pictures coming out of that are amazing. Yeah, I've got one, but... Um, but do you it's, yeah it's very very nice that that the uh, dual lens thing is um is great just that that flexibility and also it's because it shoots 4k um it gives you that additional digital zoom so once you put that in and right. a bit of digital zoom it actually for most kind of things you're doing that you're not zooming off onto the horizon um right. it does the job pretty well for me i'm i'm really pleased with it if somebody was had an iphone 6 or 6s and they weren't in the mojo kind of space, I really wouldn't see much of a point to upgrade, um, besides obviously slightly nicer photos and video. But if uh -huh. you're doing this professionally, I think it really is worth it if you can uh, persuade yeah. whoever it is who pays the uh, phone bill. I'll, I'll tell you one thing to, to wrap up. Um, I'm gonna keep doing this until somebody else does. How's that? Yeah, well, I hope you keep doing it even after somebody else does it. Okay. And um, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's great to have uh, people like yourself um, working in universities as well, because um, brainwashing the next generation. And um, <laughs> uh, where is it? Is it Ann Arbor, is it? Michigan State University? Oh, oh, you just said a horrible, horrible thing. Is that not uh, how you pronounce it? No, well, no, Ann Arbor is is the chief rival. They're University of Michigan. They're about 45 miles away. Oh, no. This is this is East Lansing, which is Michigan State. Oh, okay. All right. So um, I, I, I could edit that bit out if I was completely yeah. corrupt to make yeah. myself sound really it, intelligent, but I won't. Yeah. Don't don't edit it out. Just let's just pity the blue and maize, the colors, and and go green. Okay. Yeah. I, I, with that, I've. Yeah, I don't understand any of it, but go green. I, I can do that. <laughs> um, and uh, if people want to find out more um, and go green um where where do they find you where, what are you on twitter and uh, websites and all that kind of thing twitter is uh my name mike cast uh, at mike castellucci and castellucci is spelled if anybody can spell it i will uh give them a free lunch um it's no i, no, I won't it's uh it, should i spell it c-a-s-t-e-l-l-u-c-c-i so mike castellucci and uh same with the uh, website MikeCastellucci.com. I'm I'm here at uh, Michigan State, and you could find me on the faculty there. And will you be posting any pictures of the uh, the uh, newsroom that you're building behind you? I will. Um, I'll post them on my uh, Twitter as it gets a little closer. And um, but there's some pretty pictures on Instagram. Instagram is M Castellucci, and I've got some pretty pictures of uh, Michigan in the fall as the leaves turn colors. Here, it's really something yeah well you know what funny enough michigan i kind of get different images of it partly from michael moore documentaries and stuff like yeah. that and right. I, I, it's I'm either sorry. beautiful or really ugly imagery <laughs> i get so uh, i'm intrigued someday if i'm passing through i'll come in and say hello but um uh yeah thank you very much for your time when is the uh, next uh, the third installment likely to come out i hope in the i hope in january just like the last one did all right. And hopefully we'll be seeing each other at uh, 
MojoCon sometime next year. Um, I'm sure we'll cross paths again. And uh, again, congratulations on the awards and the great work you do. And um, good luck getting that studio ready for the election day. Thanks for thanks for uh, having me, and I'll keep following you because I, I learn a lot from you. If you like this podcast, don't forget to subscribe, and we'd love it if you would leave a review on iTunes or Stitcher. To get in touch with Mark, go to www.purplebridgemedia.com or tweet him at Mark Egan Video.